Hi there, and welcome back to the Tyra Cycling Podcast. We're here today with episode 46. I'm here again with our editor, Ewan Scott. Ewan, um, today we've got a returning interviewee, a returning um, guest on the podcast. Could you tell us a little bit more about who is returning and what subject matter you're going to be covering today? Yeah, absolutely. Um, we have, we're have we delighted to have Thomas Sorensen, the Chief Executive Officer of uh, Scandinavian Enviro Systems, back with us today. Um, Thomas has almost become a regular. And uh, the reason that he's back talking to us today is because Enviro and a French-based uh, investment group called Antin have uh, gone into a joint venture to roll out the pyrolysis plants across Europe with the aim of recycling 1 million tonnes of tyres by uh, 2028. Okay, okay. Well, yeah, I saw we saw the um, press release announcement the other day and, and published on something on our website. So it'll be good to talk more to Thomas and get get more into the detail regarding that. So let's have a look at that interview you had with Thomas right now. So Thomas, can you firstly tell me, can you summarise the, the latest joint venture? Yeah, I mean, uh, first of all, uh, it, it's, uh, it's um, a pleasure for us to announce this. Uh, we have been working very hard with three various, you know, uh, um, detailed and and uh, structured partners to get this in place over a long time and uh, this is truly a game changer in the industry i think this will be uh, opening the door and paving the way really for uh, for pyrolysis and um, and the possibilities for sustainable materials and and, and the circular economy of that uh, both for the recover carbon black materials but also for the tire pyrolysis oil and i mean uh, the Three different parties here, they, they really contribute with uh, significant and, and critical uh, experience and, and uh, uh, contributions, which is for an Antan, of course, uh, uh, financing capabilities. Uh, they have a vast experience of, of financing infrastructure in different senses. So for us, it's fantastic to be, become a part of what they think is next generation infrastructure investment and providing capital. Uh, Michelin obviously providing uh, um, a very good support in entering the market with uh, volumes, uh, verifying the materials, actually both the RCB and the tire pyrolysis oil in this case, and also committing to uh, multi-year uh, agreements for that. Uh, and for us, of course, we as a technology provider, we, we provide the technology and experience and knowledge about pyrolysis and the market and, and the knowledge of our specific the characteristics of our specific materials. So this will be a collaboration in, in joint venture form where, where we have a shareholders agreement where, where all the uh, possibilities for to make this happen over a, a significant time. Um, as we mentioned in the press release, uh, we are aiming to the volume of 1 million tons of end of life tires. Of course, that is a significant volume in Europe, but uh, this is also what has been triggering this collaboration to be able to um, both take that opportunity, but also to be uh, able to replace some of the less um, sustainable solutions that are out there today. Yeah, uh, of course, the, the the tire industry has always been a target for the pyrolysis people. And uh, the, the big issue has always been uh, quantity. Uh, consistency um, and, uh, and volume. So we, we appear to be reaching the stage where people like Enviro uh, are able to, to meet those requirements. Uh, I, noted, I noted that uh, Enviro has the option to acquire a 30% stake in this joint venture. Uh, can, can you explain how that works? Uh, well, not in detail, unfortunately, but uh, it, well, of course, I mean, it has been um, very important for Enviro as, as we have done when we started the, this, the strategic 
uh, development of the company multi several years ago, uh, going ahead, you know, starting with uh, partnering with with Michelin and uh, taking them on as uh, the major shareholder, but also to make sure that we have still a, a long term stake in every development that we do strategically. And of course, to have the ability to take part in this infrastructure investment that is actually becoming now and, and be a part of that value creation over time, over more than a decade, potentially, potentially uh, uh, not only as a technology provider, but actually as a part owner. That, that is, of course, extremely beneficial for us, us and our shareholders. Um, now, being an infrastructure investment, this also opened up uh, different types of, of alternatives for financing, uh, which also uh, enables uh, Enviro to, to uh, explore different opportunities, how to finance our uh, 30%. But I cannot uh, go into detail how that will be done. But of course, there's a part of creating, the, creating this joint venture. There is a plan how to, how to um, make that happen. Okay. Now, we, we, we know about Enviro, we've, we've been following you for, for many years, um, but can you tell us a bit about Ant in, in Infrastructure Partners? What is, is their role in the, in the joint venture? Yeah, um, of course. I mean, <clears throat> Antan is, um, is a very well-known uh, uh, specialist in this kind of infrastructure uh, investments. They are uh, based in France, but really global presence, uh, about 200 employees focusing only on this type of infrastructure development. And they have different capabilities in, in, uh, in larger investments, in more mature markets and so on. And, and this is what they call next gen uh, investments, where they explore new potential infrastructure uh, technologies, uh, such as this one, uh, and try to find the best uh, technology providers and the best partnerships in uh, in exploring those new opportunities and we have been uh, selected in a in a multi-year um, evaluation of of different uh, technology providers uh, different strategic set setups um, um, i think they have uh, really taken on this challenge in a fantastic uh, way very professional in every detail uh, everything from from technical evaluation to business case calculations and evaluations and scenario analysis and so on risk analysis and spend a lot of time effort and money on on really exploring and understanding the market and the potential um, of all the different stakeholders and so on so very very um, detailed um, analysis made by them um, of course they are used to do this this is part of their natural process they they do this every day uh, this is their profession and, and uh, to be able to be successful in, in the market they operate and need to do this in, a, in, a, in this type of way. I mean, they, they run about uh, 31 billion euros in their funds, so uh, it's a quite significant amount and, and they know uh, how to manage this over a long time. It's, I mean, we have been talking about establishing Uddevalla for a while, but our strategic plan, as you know, has been to establish multiple plants and uh, not to have... Uh, different owners of different plants and, and that strategies can now be, be really uh, put in place together with Antan uh, and the management team of the joint venture which is also you know selected and appointed by Antan uh, and they have also then been a very important part of that process already. Okay now we, we all know who Michelin are uh, how much involvement will Michelin have in the project? Are they simply uh, a client or do they have some technical input as well? No, but I, I mean, they are, as, as we all know, they are uh, the largest or at least one of the largest uh, tire producers, but not only tire producers, they are also investing in, in next generation of materials. And, and of course, they will be uh, exploring all different types of opportunities we could have with the RCB, the characteristics of the RCB and the uh, characteristics of the TPO, since they have now um, um, delivery agreements for multiple plants with the joint venture, they will of course be continuing to develop, develop and exploring business opportunities for those materials. But uh, in, the, in the daily operations of the joint venture, Michelin will not be uh, involved in that sense. They are, they are, they are put, 
step by step, plant by plant, becoming an owner in the own venture. Uh, but of course, they are opening up uh, also the validation of Recover Carbon Black uh, entire industry and, and really setting their quality mark on, uh, on the quality of our material and the consistency of the material um, and us as a company working with quality and safety and all those things that are really, really important to establish companies. Uh, but I want to make very clear that we are open to uh, sign contracts for deliveries to uh, to anybody in the market. Uh, so there are no restrictions or, or exclusivities to Michelin in that sense. Uh, I would say rather the opposite. I, th I think one of the objectives here for Michelin is also to support Enviro and make sure that we have um, the possibility to, to, to reach the full potential of Enviro as a company. The target of recycling 1 million tiles by 2030 is uh, remarkably ambitious. What sort of percentage of material do you envisage going back into the tire industry uh, as oil, as say recovered carbon black, possibly as say, sustainable carbon black? It's it's uh, at this early point very uh, very difficult to to give any figures and and uh, many of those figures as you know are very secret in the tire industry as well so even if we, we would have them we wouldn't be uh, allowed to share them but of course this will grow uh, if we look at the total market everybody in the tire industry is looking for new sustainable alternatives and the RCB is definitely one that we have proven from Enviro side and Michelin side that it can be reintroduced not only into uh, specific racing tires, but also into tires now that is approved for, for road transport. And uh, uh, we anticipate the, 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 I mean, the need is there. The targets for uh, 2050 for all the tire uh, companies are there. And uh, we see the movement in the industry now uh, really into this sector when they need to replace uh, fossil resources and other types of resources with sustainable materials. Um, so uh, a lot of development on the RCB side and, and replacing fossil alternatives. And then, of course, as you say, for the TPO, there are actually multiple roads into the tire industry. Um, it could be used, as you say, as feedstock to produce carbon black as a sustainable carbon black or uh, in, in, as, a, as a feedstock for for carbon black materials production, but also uh, as uh, base oil, pro uh, uh, production oil and process oil uh, for the tire industry. So there are multiple uh, angles and directions where the tire pyrolysis oil could, could go into the tire industry. Um, of course, the interest from chemical companies also to develop or extract other chem chemicals from the TPO that in, in place or in time could get into the tire industry is also a possibility. Uh, but our ambition, of course, together in the Yont Venture is to, over time, uh, as much as possible of uh, the resources we recover, put them into as valuable raw materials as possible and as circular raw material as possible over time as the market evolves. Okay, as, as the market grows, I, for in, Enviro's part in this uh, and the joint ventures part in this, how many plants do you envisage in Europe? It, it's a question we get quite a lot the last few days. It has been quite <laughs> heavy interest from, from media and, and uh, uh, many of our stakeholders, of course. But uh, we, we, we don't give a number at this moment. I mean, the plant we are establishing in Uddevalla is um, we have uh, an environmental permit uh, approved for 60,000 tons in two stages. Um, but going forward, we anticipate that there will be opportunities to build larger capacity plants, as we discussed in, in earlier uh, interviews, that we have a, a modular uh, uh, technology that could be scaled up quite easily, depending on site and market and location and so on. Uh, but, you know, uh, there will be, over the time of this joint venture, um, uh, plan, uh, we will see a development also in the scaling and the adaptability of that modular technology into larger plants and smaller plants, depending on, on market. But to reach the 1 million tons, of course, I would rather say that we will go up in size than down in size. Yeah. Now, it, it was very noticeable at, uh, at Tyrotech in Hanover 
the other week that uh, companies who in the past uh, didn't want to talk about recycling um, are now all about recycling. We, we saw companies like uh, Cabot, Burma, Orion, uh, and, and a couple of others who in the past didn't want to talk about recover carbon black, all now incorporating carbon black. We have um, companies talking about devulcanization and tire manufacturers talking about buying recycled products. What do you think has changed? Why are manufacturers buying into recycling now when they haven't done for the past 20 years? Uh, I think there, there are a few different things that really have put, been put in place the last few, couple of years. Of course, the environmental uh, situation around us, the, the both legislation and, and the market is moving in a, in, in a direction that we have no choice and they have no choice other than to find uh, alternative resources than fossil uh, raw materials. And that, I mean, the tire industry is putting tremendous pressure on uh, the carbon black producers to, to find solutions uh, find new materials, uh, and and it's a it's a matter of survival. Um, I, I know our share our chairman made a statement, quite bold one, a few years ago. But but it seems like it's going in that direction now. Actually, that the tire industry is putting pressure. We met um, uh, Volvo Group a couple of weeks ago, and they also said that they are out now um, uh, talking to all their sub suppliers in the rubber industry and also the tire industry to make sure that they fulfill. The ambitions of Volvo Group in terms of rubber and plastics and so on to to increase the uh, the recycled content and sustainable content, uh, which is is changing the, the whole industry. I mean, before we were technology providers coming to ask to put material uh, into the products. Now it's designed into the products, so it's totally switched, and uh, I think that's very interesting. And and of course there has been a development in the market with our technology, we have become much more professional in what we do um, in every aspect over the last five years or so. I mean, we are in a totally different place. And I know several of our competi competitors in the market has also taken big leaps in, in understanding the technology and the market and, and the characteristics of a material and the demands of the market. So it, it has been a I mean, tremendous change both from our side and from the customer uh, side uh, the last couple of years uh, getting us to where we are today. And I mean, sustainable solutions, there is there is really no choice. We, we have to have them and, and we are very happy to be able to contribute in a large scale way uh, on our part. Yeah, it's um, the, the sustainability I, motivation in itself has changed. Uh, I, I was just thinking this morning about the uh, Future Tire Conference in Cologne in 2018, and uh, the, the tire manufacturers present, um, they, they talked a lot about sustainability, but when they were asked about the recycled content, um, Continental were probably about the most advanced with, they were talking four or five percent recycled content. Uh, Michelin, Bridgestone were around one percent and uh, Pirelli just didn't know what they were doing at the time. So to go from that stage to this massive joint venture that you, you're entering and, and for a couple of other of the pyrolysis uh, competitors also entering the market with the tire manufacturers, we, we see that a massive change in direction. And, uh, it's, uh, it'll be interesting to, to see it follow through. Can I ask you one final question? When do you expect the Udavala plant to be up and running? Uh, yeah, we say it will be a full, oper full operation by 2025. Um potentially before that but uh, we try to make sure i mean it's it's a it's a large uh, undertaking it's the first uh, larger industrial scale plant with with the uh, uh, the team we are we're having on and the partners we are putting in place now but this platform that we are establishing now will be the one 
uh, that we will roll out uh, in many, many plants ahead. So it's very important that we are thorough in everything we do and uh, do the planning and select the right suppliers that are really capable, not only to supply to the first plant, but that is able and willing to, to uh, expand together with us. And that of course takes also uh, effort and, and time to establish that. But uh, 2025 feels very comfortable. I think that's uh, uh, very much in line with, with how we have uh, planned to execute. Now, waiting for this large um, news <laughs> to be out there in the market with the Young Venture. Uh, of course, we would have been wanting everything to be uh, much, much earlier up and running because the demand is there. You know that, you read that every day, that uh, uh, there, there is a lot of demand in the market. So our customers would like us to be up and running much faster, but I think this is the way to do it in order to uh, create the platform that we need for the expansion. It's uh, it's very important that the Uddevalla first plant will be the, the, the center of excellence that we expect it to be. Yeah, and I, I guess that uh, as you're building the plant, you will come across uh, unforeseen uh, technical issues that you need to address. And once you've got them right, you have the Udavella plant uh, up and running to expectations. It makes it easier to roll out the, uh, the following plants. Absolutely. And I mean, we have uh, 10 years experience of running Austin's Brook plant. Of course, it has uh, been a lot of challenges there, but also it has been the most valuable asset we have, have to knowledge and creating the experience and understanding about the process that we need. So I think we have um, a fantastic foundation uh, based on all the experience we have from, from operating that plant and delivering to customers for, for uh, since 2016, actually. Thank you very much for your time, Thomas. As always, it's, sure. it's been interesting to talk to you. And I, I, uh, I hope that we can uh, produce something for our viewers that will generate some interest. I hope so. I'm, I'm sure that it will. Normally, you have a very good attention to, to the episodes. OK, uh, there you have it. That was our, our interview with Thomas Sorensen. Ewan, um, very big announcements is for Enviro rolling out more pyrolysis plants across across Europe. You mentioned in the introduction the big the, the the high volume they're looking to recycle. On the face of it, this seems like a really really big announcement for Scandinavian in, Enviro systems. It is. It is. It's uh, it's not just a big announcement for for Enviro. It is a big announcement for the whole industry mm. after years of the uh, the tire manufacturing's manufacturers denying the use of recycled materials and uh, telling us that they weren't interested all of a sudden we have massive developments like this one from Enviro and uh, of course in I think in our next podcast we we talked to uh, Black Cycle uh, and uh, Pascal Klein of Pyram Innovations in particular about the progress that's been made in, in, with, with that project, taking recovered carbon black and recycled materials back into the tyre industry. And uh, then the, the podcast, hopefully podcast coming shortly after that, will be with Patrick Buddha. Uh, and uh, possibly Guido Viet at uh, Zeppelin Systems. Uh, Zeppelin Systems work very closely with tire manufacturers, and uh, they are set about uh, establishing a sustainable tire alliance. Um, and hopefully, we'll be talking to some of the parties in, in that as well. But the, the fact is that uh, the tire industry has now um, woken up to the need to include recycled materials in their sustainability strategy. And uh, they're taking recycled materials, pyrolysis in particular, uh, very seriously. And I think shortly we will also see uh, an uptake in the more devulcanized material from the tire manufacturers. But that'll come later. Definitely. Yeah, this is, yeah, it's, um... Yeah, this is quite a sizable announcement by, by Enviro. 
Um, as you said, Pyram, uh, you know, they're progressing well with their new plant, the new plant as well. Um, it seems I, I don't suspect this will be the 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 last big announcement we have in the pyrolysis field over the next year, couple of, couple of years. Um, it seems as though there's been a big sort of. I know we have discussed. Yeah, I know we have discussed the the progress of pyrolysis and the interest in in these projects, but it seems as though maybe in, even more so in the last year, eighteen months, we've seen a lot more of you know assurances and confidence in it, like big level of confidence in 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 the industry before just interest, you know. Yeah, absolutely. The it, it was interesting at Tyrotech. Now, in the past, we'd gone and spoken to the likes of uh, Cabot about the, the use of recycled blacks, and uh, they they laughed at the idea. They just were not interested. Well, you know, we're a couple of years down the line, and uh, we we find that uh, Cabot, Perla, uh, Orion, um, all the carbon black people are producing. Um, sustainable blacks that use an element of recovered carbon black. We also spoke to uh, John Davidson at uh, Burla and uh, he tells us that Burla will be taking the whole output from Sirtec's new plant in the Netherlands and that Sirtec and Burla have got plans to open further a uh, tire pyrolysis plants across Europe. Mm. So we, we've gone from, no, we're not interested to, yeah, we have to be there in a very short period of time. Yeah. We, 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 are, we are seeing a sea of change in the industry. Definitely. It's, it's almost like, be, <laughs> it's almost like you said, no, we're not interested and people being like, oh, we need to be there. It's almost a little bit like, making sure people are on the train as it leaves the station a little bit, you know, that sort of metaphor of making sure, you know, the business isn't gone and people aren't so far ahead. Yeah. It's difficult yeah. to catch up, you know. Um, it's a little bit, it sounds a little bit like that in that final um, scenario. But okay, that was a good good interview and a good, a good chat with Thomas. Obviously, you know, it's um, one of the, you know, along with, Pyram Innovations and Boulder is one of the leaders and pioneers sort of in Thai pyrolysis. So it's always good to have these conversations. Um, we'll be back very shortly with, as you said, um, episode 47, which will be a conversation with Black, uh, with the Black Cypher Consortium. Until then, thank you for watching and thank you for listening.